So last week in Battletech, we explored the narrative. We explored the feeling of clans versus clans. And I pushed that up to the archive. I say that because if you're coming into this podcast, into this vlog from a much later date, this is not quite part two. It's building on that shift because I feel like for many of us, the entry point, the tech level for Battletech, Intersphere, Succession Era, and when you make that jump to the clans, and you should make that jump. This is coming from a Battletech player who for, can we call it a career? Most of my Battletech career, it's been Intersphere versus Intersphere. And it's pretty recently that I've made the jump to actively playing the clans. Uh, with What I mean by that is rather than playing a one-off game or some scenarios, I'm really looking to build and field an effective clan force. That shift in tech is huge. And one of the considerations that we want to explore in Battletech, this duality, for the most part, and this is the excitement of the game in my opinion, these machines, your mechs, can take tremendous amounts of punishment. Energy mechs a little bit more, but mixed mechs, energy ballistic weapon mechs, still the same way. Arms get blown off, systems take a hit, legs go to internals, your leg gets blown off, you stand back up. Now essentially you're just a, a torso twist turret on there. And part of it is, when is enough enough? When do you pull back? When do you retreat? When do you begin to cycle that one mech off and push another mech forward? Of course, a lot depends on if you're playing in a campaign or not. But there's this constant tension of just how much more can you push your mech. Now, that's modified by tactics, of course. Uh, simply put, if I take a lot of damage on my left torso and it goes to internals, I don't want to take more damage there simply because there might be some critical systems. But I also don't want to lose one of my primary limbs. Often a lot of mechs will have a primary weapon such as a PPC or something else mounted in that limb. So what I'll do tactically, best I can, is now literally put my best side forward. Put that right side forward, or at least facing the majority of the opposing mechs. So based on the incoming shots and the profile, hopefully I'll soak it up on there. So there are tactical decisions, um, fire discipline and things like that that will push the longevity of your mechs. But Battletech being Battletech, there are those moments that uh, simulate the fog of war, those what-if moments where the game pauses for a second, such as a headshot, or such as a chest, center torso hit, critical hit, right, snake eyes. You roll that off, you hit three locations, or something blows up internally, and you're like, how can that happen? Well, you know, a lucky hit. Fog of War, Dogs of War, Murphy's Law, whatever we want to call it, stuff goes down in Battletech on there. But I want to say like one in every, I looked back, I thought it was one in every 12. One in every eight games that I play, and, and certainly that's not a scientific formula, that's just kind of the pulse of what I'm feeling and what I notice. One in every eight games things go crazy with Battletech. And, and there's those moments, of course, obviously when it happens to you, but when it happens to an opponent where you're like, yes, this is the buy-in. This is why I'm playing this game. But it is rare. With the clans, though, there's a slight, slight shift. There's a slight, slight shift. And that shift makes things like this happen more often. Um, example, not the reason why I play the Warhawk, but one of the reasons, kind of an after effect, you've got four ER PPCs. So the first thing when you make that jump to extended range weapons, it's range and damage. First couple of clan games I'm playing the Warhawk, I'm counting off, oh, hit you with my PPC, 10 points, right arm, 10 points, left torso, 10 points, right leg, and then I realize after like three, four, five rounds, no, these babies are kicking out um, 15 damage on there. Okay, you get past that. But what you now realize is with the clans, the PPCs, certain weapons have not only extended range, but against the majority of mechs out there, they can essentially one-shot head. One-shot, blow that head clean off. Salvage doesn't even matter because it's just inner tech garbage on there, right? But usually what happens when you take a headshot, you absorb it on the armor, you make that pilot check 
most likely you'll pass that consciousness check, although sometimes you go night-night for a little bit. And then that second hit, depending on what it is, if it's a lower spread on the missiles, you might take some internal damage or it might go to internals on that first shot, get a crit, you're messed up. I don't want to say never. I don't want to say most likely, but most likely you will survive that first hit on there. But you will take some effect. You will take some crippling damage, especially if it's a campaign with your pilot. Those consciousness checks are going to add up, but you're still in the game. You're still in the game. The clans blows you right off. So what we see, um, especially since a lot of clan mechs, we're going to diverge a little bit into clan tech here. My understanding is I want to either be all in with pulse lasers. Pulse lasers are like free targeting computers. Um, yes, they build up a little more heat, but hey, we've got you know double heat sinks. We've got m these clan mechs are mo for the most part built to generate and deal with the heat that they put out. Pulse lasers are just absolute murder. The, the, the minus two to hit there is just crazy town on there. So I definitely want to build across all my lances, across everything, just to take advantage of that. Or I feel like I want to go PPC, ER, maximum multiples dealing, you know, 15 points or around their instant kill headshots. What this means is every time I shoot, especially since they're in multiples, as the game goes on, something that happens in one and eight games now maybe drops to one and six. And if I'm fighting Inner Sphere, okay, they've got more mechs. If I'm fighting clans, um, it's still going to have that same result. Now you're down a mech. And uh, certainly in Battletech, generally speaking, you lose a mech. Not only have you lost all that firepower, not only have you lost that area control on the map, um, you've lost that initiative. Side counter, that's why you bring some initiative sinks with infantry, although I know a number of you have house ruled that, and, and I understand that house rule. Subphase possibly on there, but you lose a clan mech. Clans versus clans, you're down a lot. So that's something else I've noticed within the flavor. That's something I've noticed where tactically it doesn't seem like much, but there is a little bit of random. There is a little bit of dogs of war, fogs of war, fog of war in Battletech. Maybe it's all those years of playing Talisman. I want to embrace that random. I want to foster that random so when it pops up, I'm not only controlling it, but I'm encouraging it on there. So when I roll for that hit location, I want to soak up and make sure that when I get that headshot, I'm putting you down for the count, especially at range. Inner sphere versus inner sphere, usually, usually we just see this with AC-20s. 